Hi folks, I'm Tatiana Whitlock, National Director of Training with The Girl in a Gun. And today I am joined by Mike Opt, owner at Dry Fire Training Cards. Hi Mike, how are you? Hi Tatiana, real good, how are you doing? Doing very good. So I would love to take this opportunity to introduce you and the work that you do and the products you offer to our viewers who may or may not have been introduced to you before. You have been a great supporter of A Girl and a Gun over the years, and many of our members have had the opportunity to work with you. But there are too many people who don't yet know about you and what you do. So can you give us an overview of you, Dry Fire Training Cards, and the types of training that you provide? Yeah. Uh, a little bit of history helps a whole lot on this. Uh, I was a real estate investor in 2008, and when the crash hit, I basically had to make a choice between shooting and eating. And so I had experience uh, with uh, Olympic coaches and some very unique experiences through the years. And I took these completely unrelated ways of training and tried applying them to firearms training with um, dry fire and mental imagery. And at, the, at that time, airsoft was seen as a joke and I incorporated uh, airsoft into it. And basically what happened was in the next couple of months, I improved more than I had in the last 10 years. And so um, I got together with friends of mine who were in special operations and tactical law enforcement, started sharing what I was doing, and they started using it. And they started getting the same kind of results. And so I ended up co-writing a book called Tactical Firearms Training Secrets. People wanted drills to do instead of all of the neurological and psychological background. So I created dry fire training cards and things kind of exploded from there. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, I had um, about three and a half years where I had vertigo almost every night. And uh, it was a, a very, very rough period. Same time I was um, shooting in national matches and I would have to do drills in between stages to be able to run the gun effectively. Well, I figured out what the underlying cause was of the neurological issues. Uh, actually, it was vitamin B. And, um, but now all of these drills that I had ended up uh, making huge uh, benefits in shooting performance. And I started using them with people as an instructor and started seeing gains that were just kind of unheard of. And so started digging really deep into the visual aspects of shooting and uh, balance of the vestibular system and hand-eye coordination and foot-eye coordination and how to integrate all those together and apply them to shooting. And so that's kind of taken us to where we are today with um, uh, 15 different training programs that people can do online plus one-on-one uh, -on -one stuff. Right. Um, oh, go ahead. No, no, that's wonderful. So I'll, I'll get to how they can find you later, but I'm always curious. You do a lot of work with a lot of people from all ilks, competitive shooters, brand new shooters. Do you get a commonly asked question when people start diving into dry fires? There's something that they're asking all the time. One of the big things is, um, uh, and, and this is really popular, and unfortunately there was a video done a few months ago that which just off the charts popular on dry fire, not working and not carrying over to live fire. And then the instructor basically um, set up the student to fail and he flinched when he switched from dry fire to live fire. And then the way that he fixed it ironically was he used dry fire on the range. Um, but that's one of the biggest things is um, that dry fire won't carry over to live fire and that dry fire isn't any good because there's no recoil. And the truth is, uh, recoil happens quicker than you can react. Uh, if you look at a full auto pistol, uh, it's the it's cycling about every 0 0.08 seconds, sometimes 0 0.1 seconds, and your reaction time is slower that slower than that, unless your name's Jerry Mitchlick, and uh, <laughs> then you might get under uh, 0.1 splits. But for most people, their gun is going to recoil and come back into alignment and there's going to be a significant lag uh, before they press the trigger again. But no matter what, that recoil is not going to happen until after the bullet's out of the, out of the end of the muzzle. So dry fire helps great with 
getting your sights in automatic alignment between your dominant eye and the target. And can you press the trigger without disturbing sight alignment? Do you know how firmly you can grip the, the gun before you start getting sympathetic movement when you squeeze the trigger? And so there's a ton of things that you can do with dry fire that um, are actually easier with dry fire. And then you get into self-defense training and a whole other world opens up because there's a lot of things that just aren't safe to practice dry fire initially. Uh, 360 degree training, um, combining striking and using what's in your hands with transitioning to a firearm and putting rounds on target. There aren't many places that'll let you do it. And even if you could do it live fire, you want to start with dry fire before you move into live fire. Conf you know, build those skill sets with dry fire and confirm with live fire. Yep. Now we're seeing a lot of a, a resurgence, I would say, in dry fire training as many more people are starting to have interest in and seek out remote or virtual training via the internet with instructors. So you have access to people all over the country now. And dry fire is the primary way that people are teaching those skill sets. What is a great starting place? What's a great first thing to try to start doing dry fire if you want to start incorporating this into your daily workout or just scheduling? Yeah, I mean, well, a little self-promotion here. Dryfiretrainingcards.com is one of the best places that you can go. And it's a collection of over 50 dry fire drills that you can do in the comfort of your home that are a combination of basics, of advanced drills, of low light drills and drills that are combined with movement so that you, um, well, it actually improves learning speed when you uh, interleave a fundamental skill with things that are more complex and more challenging to the central nervous system. Perfect. Now, for people who have now decided they really need to learn more, how and where can they go online to find out how to reach you? There's a couple of places. My my blog is at Dry Fire Training Cards slash blog. Uh, if you're interested in the visual aspects of shooting, I'd suggest going to visiontraining.com. And I've um, got some absolutely incredible training there that um, there's really nothing else like it in the world uh, for self-defense shooting. Uh, the The concepts that I am using uh, with self-defense shooting, a lot of them have come from uh, professional sports. They've come from professional baseball, hockey, soccer, et cetera. And nobody has applied them to uh, firearms training. The only thing close is shotgun training and uh, shooting clays. But uh, they, it hasn't been applied to firearms, uh, self-defense firearms training real effectively until now. So that's a, an eye-opening a place where you can learn about some concepts like vision speed and how you can improve the speed that you're able to shift focus and see things clearly and make decisions based on visual input. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again for everything that you've done over the years and continue to do to support A Girl and a Gun and our members across the country. And we look forward to working with you and training with you soon. Thank you very much, Tatiana.